on the 13th of June 2007, tragedy struck the peaceful neighbourhood of Streatham, England, leaving its residents in complete shock and disbelief. The Kumari Baker household, a seemingly normal home, became the site of a heinous crime that would grip the nation when in the dead of night, a mother slaughtered her own flesh and blood, her two daughters, Davina and Jasmine. How could a mother set out to buy kitchen knives to use in the slaughter of her children? This is the harrowing story of the murders of 16-year-old Davina Baker and 13-year-old Jasmine Baker. The Kumari Baker family lived in Streatham, Cambridgeshire in England and consisted of 41-year-old Rekha Kumari Baker, her husband, businessman David Baker and their two daughters, 16-year-old Davina Michelle Baker and 13-year-old Jasmine Kelly Baker. Davina was said to be the feisty, outgoing and extroverted one and Jasmine was the quiet and intellectual one who sometimes felt she lived in her sister's shadow. But despite their differences, and their two different personalities. The girls got on together fantastically. Their mother, Rekka, was a pub waitress and hotel worker, and neighbours and acquaintances said that she often kept to herself. Behind closed doors, however, tension brewed between David and Rekka, and the couple decided to divorce in 2004. As the relationship further soured, a messy custody dispute began, and Rekka also started having bitter feelings towards her ex-husband's new partner, Katie Cohn. Rekka clearly did not like Katie, and she was concerned about the amount of time the children were spending with her. David said, she did not like Katie, there was a lot of friction between them. At home, Rekka also had a very strained relationship with her daughters, an erratic behaviour behind closed doors hinted at a turbulent domestic life. Rekka's inner turmoil seemed to intensify in the aftermath of her divorce, leading to escalating conflicts and strained interactions with others regarding her daughters. Stephanie Franklin, the vice principal of Impington Village College near Cambridge, where Davina was a pupil, had a series of meetings with Rekka to discuss concerns about Davina. During a meeting in October 2004, Stephanie Franklin remarked how Rekka could be aggressive and dictatorial, and she even witnessed Rekka telling Davina twice that she wished Davina was dead. Stephanie Franklin said, I said, you don't mean that. That's a really extreme thing to say. You are a mother. And she said, I do mean that. And she turned to Davina and said, I wish you were dead. Things back at home did not seem to be much better, and Davina would usually end up spending weeknights at her father's house after Rekka threw her out. On the 11th of June 2007, Rekka took her younger daughter Jasmine for a routine appointment with GP David Tose, and all seemed well. Dr Tose said, Jasmine was light-hearted and laughing and giggling, and there was no evidence of any tension between the two of them at all. Miss Kumari Baker seemed fine. It was a light-hearted consultation. After leaving the appointment, Rekka headed to the supermarket, Asda, and purchased some goods, including some kitchen knives, and she headed home. The following day, David Baker spent time with his children, where they laughed together about Davina's uniform for her new job at Pizza Hut, and their mother then picked the girls up and took them on a trip to Lakeside Shopping Centre. After their shopping trip, they went back to their mother's house to spend the night. In the early hours of the morning of the 13th of June 2007, Rekka climbed from her bed and walked downstairs to fetch the knives she had purchased just days prior at the Asda supermarket. With calculated precision, she crept through the darkness of her home in her nightdress, seeking out the sleeping forms of her daughters, Davina and Jasmine. Armed with kitchen knives, she unleashed a torrent of brutality upon her unsuspecting victims. The eldest, Davina, was killed first, and her mother stabbed her relentlessly 37 times. During the attack, Davina awoke and tried to protect herself, and forensic analysis revealed traces of defensive wounds on Davina's body. Jasmine, the younger sibling, met a similar fate in her own bed and was stabbed 29 times. After killing the girls, Rekka took a shower and got dressed and went out twice in her car before ringing a friend who was a special constable and said, 
I have done something terrible. In a handwritten note she left at the murder scene, she wrote, Sorry doesn't mean anything now. I killed my two beautiful daughters. I don't want them to get hurt as I did. Jeff hurt me so much I cannot explain. He found it difficult to compromise at times, but I loved him so much. My kids will not be a burden to anyone anymore. When police arrived at the house, they were shocked by the ferocity of the attacks. They found Davina kneeling on the floor and Jasmine in her bed. Both were dead. Detective Sergeant Jennifer Johnstone said the scene was all she could think about for a considerable amount of time, and she said that Rekka was very calm, she was not upset, she was not crying, and she was very quiet, and added she was more concerned that she didn't want it to get in the press what she had done. When in custody, Rekka told a police officer she did not like the clothes they had provided her with and that she wanted other clothing fetched from her house. Officers reminded her that they could not re-enter the house until the bodies were removed, and she began to cry. Later that day, Rekka was interviewed by Dr. Neil Hunt, a consultant psychiatrist, and she told him her side of the story. Rekka said that she had woken early in the morning, had had a drink, went to the bathroom, and then picked up the knives. Dr. Hunt said, Rekka told him she went out for a drive after the attack, then returned home and realized she was drenched in blood. She said, this was not supposed to happen, I love my girls. Rekka Kumari Baker's trial lasted two weeks and she admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, but denied murder. She said that she had been suffering from a mental disorder and an abnormality of mind, making her guilty of manslaughter, but not murder. Psychiatrist Lyle Hamilton, who was called to give evidence by Rekka's lawyers, said medical literature showed that women had killed children because they were mentally ill and because they were a retaliatory type, and that Rekka displayed a combination of both categories. However, Dr. Neil Hunt, the consultant psychiatrist who had interviewed her the day of the murders, told jurors he did not think there was evidence of any mental illness, despite her extreme and unusual behavior. He said, Given the extreme and unusual behavior, I was concerned that there was a high chance that she may be suffering from a mental disorder. I didn't think she had any serious mental illness. I didn't think there was evidence of any mental illness. The prosecution carried on by stating that Rekka killed the girls as a form of revenge against her ex-husband and father of the girls, David Baker, and that she wanted to wreak havoc on him. They explained how there was much contention between her and her ex-husband over the care and custody of their children. She had also been distressed by the breakup of a relationship with her boyfriend Jeff Powell. Jeff Powell said that Rekka was a good mother, but her behavior had become oppressive when he tried to end things between them shortly before the girl's deaths. They also brought forward the teacher who had witnessed Rekka telling her daughter twice, I wish you were dead during a meeting in 2004. The court also heard how Rekka had bought the weapons which were used to kill the daughters, an hour after taking Jasmine to GP David's toes for a routine appointment. Dr. Toes told the court that concerns had previously been raised about Rekka's mental health, but on that specific day, Rekka seemed fine, and it had been a light-hearted consultation. Rekka had previously been diagnosed in 2003 as suffering from reactive stress with mild depressive features, but that clinical depression had not been diagnosed, and Dr. Toes was unable to find any evidence of mental health problems. The court was told social services had been involved to assess Rekka's home arrangements, but doctors had concluded that she was at low risk of self-harm and that the teenagers had no mental health problems. It was clear to everyone that she knew exactly what she was doing that day, and that she had premeditated the murders by purchasing the knives, and it only took jurors 35 minutes to deliver their guilty verdict. During sentencing, David Baker's victim impact statement was read to the court, and he spoke of the incalculable loss he had suffered. He said, having them taken away from me in such a brutal way and by the woman who was their mother, has had an incalculable effect. 
I am haunted by the horror of the events of that night, and probably will remain so for a very long time. She tore them from us all, and life can't be the same for those who remain. I have been greatly affected, not only by the fact of my daughter's deaths, but also by the utterly savage manner by which it occurred. While the statement was being read out, Rekka looked at the ceiling, appearing impatient, and she mouthed the word, rubbish at one point. Finally, Rekka Kumari Baker was sentenced, at Cambridge Crown Court, to a minimum of 33 years in jail, one of the longest jail terms ever given to a woman in the UK. She appeared untroubled as she looked at the judge, and she never displayed any emotion. Mr Justice Bean said, the parole board would not consider her for release until 2040, when she will be 72. He said she had been found guilty of two brutal murders on the basis of clear and compelling evidence. He said, most people will find it inexplicable that a mother could kill her own children. You knew quite well what you were doing and you were not mentally ill. Most people will find it inexplicable that a mother could kill her own children and you have given no explanation for it. I think mild depression was probably combined with a wish to retaliate against David Baker and destroy the happiness in his life, but to some extent your motive remains a mystery. Your defense of diminished responsibility was flimsy and unsubstantial. You knew quite well what you were doing and you were not mentally ill. After the verdicts, Detective Inspector Jim McCrory said, it became clear, as this investigation progressed, that Rekka Kumari Baker set out to murder her children. Only she will know the reasons why she carried out such a vicious and deliberate attack, as they lay sleeping in their beds. Davina and Jasmine were two innocent young teenagers, who were killed by the person they should have been able to trust most in this world. In 25 years in the police service, I have never before investigated such an upsetting or sickening crime. After the hearing, in a statement by David Baker, read by his brother George outside the court, the girl's father said he thought about his daughters every day and all their love and closeness for each other. He said, part of my heart was taken when they died and I long for the day when we shall be reunited. Time has passed since their deaths, but my sense of loss and pain has eased little. I was robbed of my daughters by an act of calculated viciousness by a woman who, having given life to them, in her vindictive mind, believed she also had a right to take that life from them. She will now pay the price for this. Not a day passes when I don't think of my girls. I smile now when I remember the good times we had. I remember most of all their love and closeness for each other, sisters together. Rekka Kumari Baker was a woman who was angry with her life, angry that her former husband had found new happiness, and angry that her new relationship had failed. Rather than move on with her life, she let that anger overpower her, and she destroyed the lives of two young girls. She is pure evil, and now she has to face the consequences of her actions, and be locked away for the majority of her life. My heart goes out to the Baker family, and to anyone who was impacted by this terrible crime. And as always, rest in peace, Jasmine and Davina Baker.